Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we are going to talk about shadows. When you look at these two shadows from these two photographs, you can tell they are quite different. One is very soft and sort of diffused, while the other one has a much harder edge. And at a basic level, it's easy to describe shadows as either hard or soft. And I'm a huge fan of drawing from reference. Whether it's a photo or real life, it's a good way to learn. But when it comes to something like shadows, it's important to be actively learning. Don't just copy what you see. Because if you can figure out some general rules of thumb, then when it comes to doing your own illustrations, you'll be able to apply those rules even though you have nothing to look at. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. So let's talk about why these shadows might be soft versus hard. I know from the descriptions in the photos that both of these are natural light, but the one on the left has less directional light, and you know that because the shadow is soft. So what this means is there's kind of light coming from everywhere. It's not harsh directional light, like the one on the right. So as a result, there are soft overlapping shadows. The image on the right is probably a low angle sun. Maybe it's the sunset, something where you'd have directional light coming right through the window and harshly pointing right on the subject. So there you get the harsh contrast, the dark shadow of the edge of the window, and then the beam of light. So one thing that makes hard edge shadows is directional lighting. Light that comes right from a light source and points on your subject. If you have soft shadows, there's probably some indirect lighting happening, which means you have light bouncing around the room and softening up the edges. But within any given shadow, you can have a combination of hard and soft edges. Because when you look at this spotlight here, there is a very sharp edge around the toe of the boot, and then as you move towards the right edge of the shadow, it diffuses, it gets softer. And what causes this is the distance from the object that's blocking the light, so the toe of the shoe, all the way to the surface that the shadow is cast on. Here is a very small distance, so the light does not have time to soften up. Over here on the right, it is a much longer distance, and that leads to a softer edge. The goal then is to take these general ideas that you learn through reference and then apply them to imaginary lighting. So this cube, for instance, I've given it a very harsh directional lighting coming from the top down. This could be something like directly outdoors on a sunny day. So the sun's almost coming from straight down and there is a hard edge to the shadow. If I want to change it to less directional lighting and have more bounce lighting, this is what it would look like. The shadow would be almost invisible because it's maybe an overcast day or potentially sitting inside your house in the middle of the day. So there's a lot of light bouncing around but nothing hitting it directly. Or potentially I want to have light coming in from a low angle maybe from a flashlight. Something like this would give a hard shadow at the beginning, and then as the shadow extends away from the object, it would soften up. You notice it also gets a little bit less dense. So you have sort of a gradation from dark right at the object to lighter as you get farther away from the object. But if instead of a flashlight, it was actually the sunset, then you would have a much darker hard edge shadow because the directional light of the sun is really powerful. Ultimately, the goal of all this is to be able to draw from your imagination, because you're not always going to have nice reference like this. So next time you're looking at reference, whether it's an actual still life or a photograph, make sure you're learning from it. Because there's a reason that the shadows are either hard, soft, or hard and then soft. And the great thing about these rules is that they apply everywhere. It's just physics. And if you really want to learn about this stuff and improve your own rendering, you should look for basic Photoshop rendering, which is available in the Control Paint store. This is where I talk all about creating 3D volume through using light and shadow. But however you learn it, focus on shadows. They will really improve your scene. Thanks for coming to Control Paint, guys.